impedance and reactance diagram problem considering different loads. Problem number 6. A 300 MVA 20 kV 3 phase generator has a reactance of 20 percentage. The generator supplies load over a transmission line of 64 km as shown in one line diagram. The ratings of components are given below. The transformer 1 ratings are 350 MVA 20 bar 230 kV and x equal to 10 percentage. Transformer 2 300 MVA 230 bar 13.2 kV x equal to 10 percentage. The transmission line is given as x equal to j.5 ohms per kilometer. We are having four loads. Load A is 60 megawatt and 0.9 power factor is given. And load B 15 MVA R and 10 kV delta connected capacitor. And load C 300 MVA 0.8 lagging power factor at 11 kV. And load D 52 megawatt plus J 66 MVA R and 12 kV voltage is given. And it is given as uh, select generator as base value and draw the impedance and reactance diagram. Solution. All the ratings are given in three phase. Step one, first we need to choose the MVA base. So MVA base is given in the problem as uh, select generator as a base value. So in the generator, the MVA value will be 300 MVA. So we can take that as a base value and it remains same throughout the problem. In step two, find the base KV for all the section based on the transformer. So wherever the transformer comes, you need to divide the section into HT side of the transformer and LT side of the transformer and you need to find the base KV in all the sections. So like this we can divide the sections. So the primary of the transformer side is section 1 and transformer secondary that is high tension side of transformer 1 and high tension side of transformer 2 is comes under section 2 and LT side of transformer 2 comes under section 3. Okay, So like that we can divide the section based on the transformers. Now we are going to find the base KV in all the three sections. Section 1, as we are going to take uh, the generator as a base value which is given in the problem, the generator KV rating is 20 KV, we can take that as a, a base value. So base KV equal to 20 KV for section 1. And for section 2, we are going to use this formula, base KV, KVB on HT side of transformer T1 equal to KVB on LT side of transformer T1 into HT voltage rating of transformer T1 divided by LT voltage rating. So you can substitute like that, base KV on LT side of transformer T1 is 20 which is in section 1 into the HT voltage rating divided by LT voltage rating 230 divided by 20 and that gives you 230 KV as a base KV on section 2. Similarly in section 3, KVB on LT side of transformer 2 that will be equal to KVB on HT side of transformer 2 into LT by HT rating of transformer 2. Here you can apply 230 is your HT side base value into the transformer rating LT of transformer T2 is 13.2 divided by 230 that gives you 13.2 kV. So here we can uh, take this as a reference base MVA is 300 MVA which remains same throughout the problem. Section 1 base KV is 20 kV, section 2 base KV is 230 kV and section 3 base KV is 13.2 kV. We are going to use this in the third step. Now step 3 find the per unit of each component. So first we start with the generator. So generator which is located under section 1, the KV value, base KV value will be 20 KV and you can apply this formula Z per unit new equal to Z per unit old into KVB old divided by new into MVAB new divided by old. So this old represent the given value and the new represent the base value. Okay, So you can substitute the old value, the given value of the generator uh, impedance is J.2, the given value of generator KV is 20 divided by the base value is 20 into given value is 300, base value is 300. So you can substitute, you will be getting J.2 per unit. Similarly for transformer 1, with refer to primary, so primary of the transformer 1 is located in section 1, so you need to take the base KV in section 1, 20 KV. Okay, apply the same formula, the given value of is imp impedance is 0.10 in transformer 1, given value of KV is 20 and the base value is also 20 and the base value of uh, MVA is 300 and the given value of MVA is 350. So you will be getting J.09 per unit. So next one is here transmission line. The transmission line is located in section 2. So you need to take the section 2 KV value that is 230 KV. Okay. So under this transmission line, the impedance values are given in ohm. Okay. It is not given in percentage or per unit. It is given in ohm that is 0.5 ohm per kilometer and the total length of the transmission line is given as 64 km. So you need to multiply the impedance 0.5 into 64. Okay, And you have to apply this formula. If the impedance values are given in ohm, you have to apply this formula. Z per unit nu equal to actual value of impedance into MVA base divided by KV base the whole square. Okay, So 0.5 into 64 into 300 is a base value 
and 230 cell base KV on section 2. So, you will be getting J.18 per unit. The next one is your transformer 2. Transformer 2 also with refer to primary we are going to consider. So, under the primary of the transformer 2 is under section 2 that is HT side. So, the base value of uh, KV is 230 KV. Here the impedance values are given in percentage or a per unit. So, you have to use the first formula Z per unit old into KVB old divided by new into MVB new divided by old. Okay, so old is nothing but your given value, new is nothing but your base value. So, Z per unit given will be J.1 into given value uh, is 230 and uh, the base value is also 230. The base value is 300 here and the given value is 300. So, if you substitute, you will get the same answer J.1. And now we are getting into the load values. So, here we are having four loads are connected load A, load B, load C, and load D. We are going to calculate the impedance value per unit impedance value of the load. Okay. So, here we are, we are going to apply this formula to find out the per unit impedance of the load. So, ZL per unit equal to ZL actual into the base MVA divided by base KV the whole square. Okay. We are going to apply this formula ZL per unit equal to ZL actual into base MVA divided by base KV square. This ZL actual we need to find with the help of a separate formula ZL actual equal to KVL square divided by SL conjugate. This KVL square is a kilo volt in load okay, square divided by SL conjugate where SL is your apparent power at load where apparent power is given as SL equal to PL plus JQL that gives SL conjugate equal to PL minus JQL. Also this SL can be represented as PL angle of phi, okay, where phi is your power factor angle and where this PL is MVA cos phi and QL is MVA sin phi. Okay, now we are going to apply this uh, detail, this formulas in the first uh, load, load A. In load A, the given values are 60 megawatt and 0 0.8, 0 0.9 power factor lagging. Power factor is given and the power in megawatt is given, the megawatt power is P, PL. Okay, so PL value is given and the power factor is given. So, you can apply the second formula to find out the SL value. So, SL equal to PL angle, the power factor angle phi. So, SL equal to PL angle phi. So, PL is 60. So, 60 angle phi is cos inverse of 0.9. So, substitute will be getting 25.84 and converting this into a rectangular form, we will be getting SL equal to 54 plus J 26.15 and this is SL value. So, you need to calculate SL conjugate to substitute in the formula. So, SL conjugate equal to 54 minus J 26.15. Find ZL actual equal to KVL square. KVL at this particular load A is uh, section 3 KV. So, section 3 KV is 13.2 KV. So, you can substitute here 13.2 KV square divided by SL conjugate that is 54 minus J 26.15. So, we will be getting this answer as a ZL actual. So, ZL per unit equal to this ZL actual into MVA base, base MVA is 300 MVA divided by base KV is 13.2 square. So, you will be getting this answer as your per unit impedance of load A. Similarly, we can go for load B. In load B, the given value is in MVAR, 15 MVAR and 10 KV, the voltage at the load B is given and it is a delta connector capacitor. So, we are going to apply the same formula over here. So, in this case, this QL value is given as 15 MVAR. So, you know this QL value and this MVA is, you can substitute the base value of MVA. From this, you can find out the sin phi value. So, sin phi value we are going to find. So, 15 is QL, 300 is MVA, sin phi. So, sin phi value will be equal to 15 by 300 that is 0 0.05. So, this gives phi equal to 2.865. So, from this you can find out cos phi also in order to find PL. So, cos phi equal to 0 0.998. Now, you can find out the PL value. PL is equal to MVA cos phi, MVA is 300, cos phi is 0 0.998. It gives you 299.4. Now, you can substitute uh, here SL equal to PL plus JQL. So, 299.4 plus J15 and SL conjugate is 299.4 minus J15. Now, you can find the actual value of the load impedance KVL square divided by SL conjugate. So, KVL. So, here you need to be very careful in substituting the KVL value. So, in this load, the KVL value is given, 10 KV is given in the problem. So, you need to substitute that 10 KV here. If the voltage value is not given here, you can consider the base value of that particular section. Okay, but uh, here in load B, the KV value is given. So, you need to substitute 10 here, 10 square divided by the SL conjugate, you will be getting this answer. And uh, then you can find the ZL per unit value. Per unit ZL actual, this answer into base MVA, 300 MVA and uh, the base KV, 13.2. So, here you have to substitute the base KV at section 3. 
okay since the load is connected in section 3 so 13.2 you need to substitute okay you should not substitute this 10 kv here okay it is a base value so we'll be getting this answer as a per unit value of load impedance now next one is load c here you can see the given value is 300 mv it is given in mva and the power factor is given and the kv value also given so we can use the same formula so here mva is given as 300 mv and power factor is also given so you can calculate pl first pl equal to mva cos phi so mva is given as 300 cos phi is 0.8 you can substitute you will be getting 240 so if pl is 240 and the cos phi is 0.8 so from there you can find out the phi value phi is 36.869 so using that you can find out QL value, QL equal to 300 into sin 36.869 that gives you 180. So you will be getting this 240 as PL, 180 as QL, you can find SL and SL conjugate. So SL equal to PL plus JQL, 240 plus J, 180, SL conjugate is 240 minus J, 180. And now ZL actually equal to KVL square divided by SL conjugate. So here you need to substitute the KVL value as a given value. It is given as 11 kV. You can substitute 11 kV, 11 square divided by the SL conjugate. You will be getting this answer. Now, the new value of load impedance is the actual value 0.322 plus J 0.242 into base MVA divided by base kV 13.2 in section 3. So, you will be getting this answer. This is how you need to solve the load value if, if the MVA and power factor is given. And load D. In load D, the values are given directly 52 megawatt plus J 66 MVA. 52 megawatt power it is PL and MVAR power is QL okay so you can apply the same formula directly you can write SL is equal to PL plus JQL 52 plus J66 and SL conjugate is 52 minus J66 okay you can apply as an actual value to you can find the actual value of load impedance KVL square divided by SL conjugate KVL value is given as 12 KV here so 12 divided by 52 minus J66 you will be getting this answer and the per unit value of load impedance equal to actual value of load impedance into the base MVA divided by base KV at section 3 you will be getting this answer. So different uh, different category of load can be represented you can calculate using uh, these methods. And the last step, step 4 draw the impedance and reactance diagram. So first we draw the uh, impedance diagram. So first you need to draw the uh, generator with the generated EMF and substitute the value J.2 then followed by you will be having transformer 1.09 transmission line J.18 transformer to j.1 then we will be having four loads connected in parallel so load a value okay which consists of resistance and the reactance and load b value load c and load d okay like that you have to represent and this is your impedance diagram and while drawing the reactance diagram you need to eliminate the load no need to calculate the load for the reactance diagram okay simply eliminate the load and represent the remaining terms generator transformer 1 transmission line and transformer 2 it become a reactance diagram okay so this is how you need to solve the impedance and reactance diagram problem using different load arrangements.